happy Gemini season, witches and non-witches and magic makers and everybody. Welcome in to Expedition to Soul. I am talking to you today about ideas for Gemini season. So Gemini season, uh, the zodiac seasons, if you don't know, they run about a month, just like our calendar seasons do. Seasons, our calendar months. What? That doesn't make any sense. Scratch everything I just said. There are 12 zodiac signs and they each take up like a 30 day chunk of time, right? So that mirrors our 12 months of a year, but they don't align with the dates like one to one. They're about to the 20th, 21st or so to the 20th, 21st, 22nd of the next month. Uh, And there's 12 of them. So we have just entered Gemini season and Gemini is the last sign of the Zodiac before our summer signs start. So it's the last spring sign of the Zodiac. And I am coming at you today with a two-part series. A series this is a series, a two-parter podcast situation. Part one today, part two will release. Uh, if you're listening to this in real time, this is a Tuesday. Part two will be out on Thursday. And I'm going to share with you five tips, five ways to honor this transition. Five today, five on Thursday to transition from spring to summer and honor this Gemini energy that carries us from one season to the next. If the word witch makes you feel full of power and excitement, if you love personal development but loathe boring love and light conversation, if a sexy combo of witchery and inner work piques your interest, you're in the right place Welcome home, Magic Maker, and welcome to Expedition to Soul, the podcast brought to you by the Sisters Enchanted. I am excited to chat with you all today. I'm fresh off of vacation. I just spent uh, the long, I just took the most time off from work that I have taken off ever. (laughs) I have been self-employed for 10 years. So For two years, I ran a education company and for, actually that was for three years I did that. That's that math-ish, something like that. For eight years, I've had the Sisters Enchanted um, and for one year together, I ran both businesses. So one year of overlap. But I think that the last time that I took this much time off from work, I think I took uh, like three weeks off of work when my first kid was born. I took no time off when my second was born and not really taken much time off since. So I just took a week, a full week and two days off. And like, it was so refreshing. I just read books and I went hiking and it felt like a beautiful way to round out Taurus season, which just ended and really get out in nature and just practice gratitude for this life that I've created and that I've been able to receive. And it just was so delightful. And I'm so grateful for Team TSE that could hold down the fort while I take that time off. So grateful for them. Literally first time ever that this has happened. So I got a solid team behind me. But now as we enter Gemini season, this got me thinking while I was away about tourist season and um, I was hiking in Acadia National Park in Maine. If you've never been, put it on your list of places to go. And I was like, honestly, this is how much I actually do the things we teach here. I was up on top of a mountain after hiking and just thinking like, oh man, tourist season. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Everything's blooming. and uh, But soon it'll be Gemini season. And what does that mean for us? Now, Gemini is a sign that I don't really, it's not one that I personally have paid tons of attention to in my astrology studies in terms of my birth chart. So some of you listening, you might have a Gemini sun or a Gemini moon or a Gemini rising or some significant Gemini placement. I have a, a 12th house Gemini and my Gemini starts late in the 11th house and So I have Chiron in Gemini. That's the planet I have there in my 12th house. And if you know anything about progressed moons, it's a topic for another day. Uh, But that, my progressed moon is in Gemini right now also. So that's really it. But I've not spent a lot of time thinking about Gemini. Interestingly, I have five planets in Sagittarius. And Sagittarius is the opposite energy of Gemini. So that makes a lot of sense as to why I might 
sort of like just glaze over when it comes to Gemini. Um, I have made a recent discovery that it, I don't even know. It's the, the more you read birth charts and you dive into them, like little bits and pieces that you've seen a hundred times but never paid attention to just start to come to the surface for you. And I've been married to my husband for 12 years. I've known him for a, a lot longer than that. And I was looking at his birth chart recently and I had never noticed or paid attention to the fact that his Venus is in Gemini. So his Venus is in Gemini and my Venus is in Sagittarius. And it really spoke to me because when it comes to the private time, uh, my husband, he like loves to talk about it and like know what's coming and wants to like say things about the intimacy. And I don't, my Sagittarius Venus is like, let's just get to it. Let's do the thing like passionate, get there, get it done. Um, and he, and it was always been kind of like a itchy spot between us. And when I saw that in his birth chart, I was like, that makes so much sense because they're opposite signs. Like it's just an opposite thing. Anyway, enough about that. But Gemini, it's not something I've paid tons of attention to. So it really got me thinking. And so I put together these 10 ways for you to really just use or embrace this Gemini energy as we transition from spring to summer. It's so important to slow down and be present and embrace these transitions and not just hustle through and rush through everything. So our first summer sign is cancer. And that shows up uh, right around the first day of summer, like June 21st, around there, you know, give or take. <laughs> anyway, so five ideas for you. And then we'll bring out the next five in just a couple days. So idea number one, super simple um, and really creative, and you can put your own energy into it. But idea number one is to create a Gemini season altar. What's an altar? You might be asking. That sounds so witchy. I've actually, I've talked to people who don't like the word altar because it reminds them of church and they have like a thing and I don't know, really use the word that works for you. Sacred space, altar. But a Gemini season altar, I love to, I do it with my kids. We typically create an altar for, or sacred space. That's really the word we use mostly um, for the moon uh, cycles. So the Gemini new moon won't happen for a little over two weeks. So we're like two and a half weeks out. If you're listening to this in real time, um, I'm recording this May 20th, 2024. And so we have a Sagittarius full moon in three days, and then we won't have the new moon until two weeks after that. So typically we do this for the moon. Um, but doing one for the sun season two, I think is beautiful. And it's something that my kids and I are actually going to do, uh, because I think that Gemini in particular, Gemini is this represents, uh, duality and like the dual nature within us. It wants to know both sides of stories. If you were thinking of Gemini as a character, you might say it's the reporter. It wants all the information. It's going to talk to all parties involved. Uh, it is, again, dual nature. Think of the yin-yang symbol. And so having the sun altar for Gemini and then also the moon altar in two and a half weeks or so for Gemini, like that's that duality. We have the inner and we have the outer. So I think it's a beautiful practice, particularly for Gemini, to honor this trans transition. We're very much moving from spring to summer. For those of us in America, we have Memorial Day coming up, which many of us qualify as the first weekend of summer, even though summer doesn't actually start for a couple weeks. So we are in this space where we're like one foot in, one foot out. So creating this altar space. Colors here, Gemini is an air sign. So yellows are beautiful. Uh, you could do like um, blue would be would be nice too. When we think of air, the opposite element would be water. Um, so having that yellow and blue there. Uh, and I think they come together to make green. And, you know, we're in spring and things are green. That is makes really no sense at all, but <laughs> metaphysically green would be a winter color. I digress, but blue and yellow could be fun for this space. Uh, blue and yellow crystals, feathers, um, you know, anything that just represents duality to you, air, the element of air, kind of maybe seeing both sides of yourself. So like what you see externally and what you see internally, that could be really cool to put on a sacred space. 
But remember, it's the sun is in Gemini right now. The moon is not in Gemini yet. So creating a sun altar. That's very external wor world, um, t very action driven. Like if you are trying to achieve any goals right now, you could use this to power up those goals. Um, what do you need to see all sides of achieving this? What do you need to see about yourself? Two sides to this situation. And you can honor all of that with a Gemini season altar divination. Uh, divination is, uh, we love divination at every time of the year, but Gemini is ruled by Mercury, which is the planet of communication. And it's a fast little communicating planet, just like Gemini is kind of chatty, like wants to know everything, right? So you can use divination during Gemini very intentionally to ask yourself, like, what, what are you not seeing about your thoughts or reaction right now. And it's kind of that two versions of you. So you might say like, oh, I feel mad about this. So then you pull the card to say, well, how else do I feel? What else do I need to investigate? What's a another side to this that I might not be seeing? Another perspective that I have that I haven't acknowledged yet. And so divination during Gemini season in particular with that intention to explore the duality within yourself can be pretty, pretty neat to do this time of year. Uh, of course, a new moon, a Gemini new moon uh, ritual or gathering uh, would be lovely. Host one of those. It's springtime. It's summer. Have a bonfire. Get outside. Uh, or just any any fest, any time, like under the night sky, as we transition from spring to summer could be fun to do with your friends. So like a beautiful evening Gemini gathering or watch a sunset together. Oh, that's so good. Then you're honoring the sunset and the Gemini sun, but then you've got that bonfire and that spring, summer night energy. I love it. And if you don't have friends in your area to do this with, like I actually don't have a lot of in-person friends. <laughs> that sounds so weird to say. Uh, but I travel a lot and, you know, I, I homeschool, I work online. So a lot of my friends live in other places. They don't live here. So that can be fun to do also with your friends though, or to get on FaceTime with your friends and watch their sunset if they live in a different time zone. And then you can do it another night and they can watch your sunset. So get creative with that and don't feel restricted by the, uh, community around you. If you don't have one, you can create that and tap into our vast internet network where we can make friends all around the world now. And I'm so grateful for that every day. All right. Herbs work with herbs during Gemini season. It is spring and we are abundant in herbs for sure. So creating herbal teas, tinctures, or burning bundles, like, um, you know, cleansing sort of bundles that you would put together, dry up, and then burn them, obviously, and use the smoke to cleanse. Lavender, rosemary, mint, uh, basil is a, a nice one for this time of year. But just any spring herbs or like wild forage for things in your area. I love to do violets and make violet um, lemonade or lilacs, which they're dying off where I am now. So I don't know. That was probably more of a tourist season thing. But uh, lilacs for lilac water is very nice too. All right. The last tip I'm going to leave you with today, I'm going to do the next five in the next episode on Thursday, but is to do mirror work. So mirror work is really looking in the mirror and talking about yourself. So <laughs> giving affirmations to yourself, uh, celebrating yourself, saying things, looking yourself in the eye that you're not super comfortable saying while looking yourself in the eye to bolster your energy, to increase your confidence, to just uh, step into your power. And again, Gemini is perfect for that because it is ruled by Mercury, which is that planet of communication. So whatever you are communicating outwardly to the world, you need to communicate to yourself if you want the world to communicate that back, right? So this duality, what are you saying to yourself? What do you want the world to say about you? If you feel like you're no good, the world's going to reflect that back on you. So look at yourself in the mirror and just say affirmations, say good things about yourself, but let that communication, that little fiery, or it's not fiery, that little air communication of mercury planet, that sentence made no sense. <laughs> you know, it's a little sprightly planet of communication. 
that apparently, if you're watching the video version of this, just like gobbles around my head uh, because I can't stop moving my hand. So let Mercury do its thing. Let Gemini, the duality of Gemini, there's two U's. There's the U in the present, the U in the mirror. Let them communicate to each other. Let Mercury do its thing. Communicate to yourself how you want the world to reflect communication back at you. And that's a powerful practice in Gemini season. And right now, when we're in these seasonal transitions, so we're past the halfway point of spring and we are closing in on summer. So we create these liminal portals in time also where we're kind of in summer, kind of in spring, right there in the middle. And uh, we can use these liminal spaces too to explore these ways of being that we've never explored before. In Gemini, in that duality, uh, is very much like a liminal space. So we can step into this transition period and say, well, what does it feel like if I dress this way? What does it feel like if I talk to myself this way? If I say this about myself, explore these different perspectives of my, you know, my meanness and who I am and what I am and what I believe and how I can show up in this world and just explore the duality of that in this liminal time as well. All right. Well, there you go. So there's five ideas to celebrate Gemini season, the Gemini sun to get you started. Uh, as I said, I'm fresh back from vacation. So sorry, I was rambly in my last episode before vacation and I'm rambly today, but I've had a lot of classes I've been teaching, just a lot going on. So I got to clear my schedule a little bit and find my calm voice again, somewhere, somewhere around here. Um, we have our holistic witchery program. If you want to learn more about all things magic, de personal development, twirled together into a beautiful cauldron of mysticism, we got you. Check it out at holisticwitchery.com. And until next time, I hope that you have an enchanted rest of your day ahead. If you love the podcast, be sure to leave us a rating or a review that helps us to get the word out about all we're doing here at the Sisters Enchanted. Thanks for being part of our community and we'll see you in the next episode.